uh, start our story, we need to go a bit back in time. So we need to travel a bit back. We need to go to the year 1440, uh, where this guy called Gutenberg uh, came up with an incredible and revolutionary idea back in the days, which was the printing press. Now, this was a true revolution because for the first time, uh, we started truly commoditizing information. So what happened is that we moved as humanity, as humans, from storytelling uh, to the mass adoption of reading. So we effectively entered a new era where we truly started uh, standardizing information. So in a way, books uh, became and have been the main way of uh, packaging, sharing, and selling content over the last 500 years. So even if we think of the computing age and computers, uh, the, the core concept hasn't really changed. Reading is still the main way in which we access and we share content. We just transposed it into the screen, in the computer screen in this case. But what happened in the last uh, few years is that with the introduction of mobile, a new revolution started to happen. So after 500 years of books being the main way we commoditize information, uh, we have seen a massive change in the way information is condensed and is shared. And this happened just in the last four years. Now, what's important to understand is that this didn't just happen because of the mobile device itself, uh, but because we started being exposed as humans to incredible amounts of information through mobile. So what happened in the last few years is that we started literally being bombarded with content on incredible amounts of channels. So we are bombarded with content on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on Messenger, on Snapchat, on Musical.ly, and the list goes on. So as a result of this, as, as people, we, we had to change the way we consume content in order to skim through all these incredible amounts of content that we're subject to and understand where we really want to focus our attention on. It turns out that we figured out pretty quickly that visual is actually uh, a great way to pack massive amounts of information into a smaller space, into less space. And that's simply because the human brain can retain and process way more data in the form of visual. So what happened in the last few years, and most of us are not understanding the profoundness of, we effectively have entered what is called a visual age. Now, just to give you some numbers and facts to make you understand how aggressively we're entering this age. Not many people know this, but in the last two years alone, teenagers that never read have tripled. We do not need to be scared of this change. Uh, it's just a natural evolution. Uh, because visual is simply the new way we condense, package, and share information in a new age where we have access to incredible amounts of data and information compared to what happened previously. So we are getting to a point where basically visual is doing to reading the same thing that reading did to storytelling. It's simply killing it. We're entering a completely new age of sharing and accessing content. Now, just to give you a bit of more data to uh, prove my point, um, it's interesting to look what happened in the last few years. So, for example, while in 2012, people were sharing some 300 million images a day on social channels. Today, that number went up to over 4 billion images a day that people are sharing on social channels. So this kind of proves this incredible societal change uh, that we're going through. As a brand, this may look very scary. Uh, because now brands need to look inside visual instead of, of text, as they did before, in, under, in order to understand what the consumer is talking about 
and, uh, and, and what the consumer is interested in. But the good news is that today we are pretty good in managing artificial intelligence technologies, and they're actually here to assist us, and, they can, and artificial intelligence can provide us technologies uh, to find, uh, for example, logos or other visual data uh, inside uh, these huge amounts of, of visual content, so that brands uh, can start again look inside these, these very large amounts of visual data and again start monetizing and measuring all this content that as, as human, as people were sharing on these new channels. In fact, some other data that most of us may not know is that today around 63% uh, of social media is made up by visual. And that number is growing extremely quickly and is taking over uh, on traditional ways such as text. And another very interesting metric is that 83% of images where consumers are talking about brands, they actually have no mention, textual mention, or hashtag uh, that allows you to link back uh, to that specific brand mention. And that's because the consumers today are communicating that completely visually. There is no need anymore for the text. And because of this, unfortunately, uh, brands are missing out on a lot of very, very valuable information. So as a brand, as an agency, as a marketer, you need to be able to see inside this huge volumes of, of images, of visual, in order to identify uh, relevant trends and actionable data to help you make the right decisions to move your business forward rather than backward. So I'd like to give you a few examples, simple examples. The first one would be influencers. So being able to identify on social media those that either immersively or passively are talking about your brand. And those are the people that are effectively convincing their peers to either get involved with a specific brand and purchase products from those brands, or maybe stay away from a specific brand. Another example would be sponsorship. So brands are spending tens and hundreds of millions of dollars in sponsoring sports events or many other types of events. And they need a way to measure the return on investment on, uh, on those sponsorship activities. So you need to know if the money that you spent in a specific event uh, is actually generating buzz or virality on social channels. Or perhaps next year you shouldn't invest in, say, promoting the Tour de France, but maybe promoting the UEFA Champions League because you see that you would have a higher return on investment in terms of content being pushed out organically by the consumer about your event. Another example, and this is actually one of my favorite, would be uh, co-branding opportunities. So there's an interesting case study where uh, one of our big clients in the social media monitoring world has noticed that there was a very interesting trend going on with Corona. So Corona would usually spend massive amounts of marketing dollars uh, at the beginning of the summer season uh, because they, through the data they had, they thought that was the best time uh, to get the, the consumer involved with their brands. But it turns out that looking inside images, again, visual that, that the consumer would share on social, there was actually an event that was even more relevant than the beginning of the summer, and that would be the beginning of a new TV series on Netflix. So it turns out that they managed to identify that that was a perfect moment of consumption for the consumer, and they started investing massively in order to increase adoption of their product during an, an event that organically made a lot of more sense for the consumer. And once again, all this was done thanks to looking inside visual content rather than textual content. You will notice here that we have no way to link whatsoever into uh, the brands that are associated to this brand, to this image. Last example I want to show you today would be brand health. So, you know, looking inside images, it's a great way to understand uh, uh, what people are saying about your brand. So, is the sentiment 
positive or is it negative? Uh, do I need to take action before perhaps uh, we have some problem that is going to spread virally on social channels? And, and let's make sure that we're there before bad things happen around our brand. Now, the ones that I showed to you today are just a few examples that may be more or less relevant to you guys today. But the message I wanted to deliver today by coming here on stage and talking to you guys is that the visual age has arrived. The visual age is effectively today, it's not even tomorrow. So the world has changed massively in the last few years, and not simply because of mobile, but because of what was sponsored and came as a result of mobile, which is visual and images. So visual is the new norm. It's not something of the past. It is the present and the future. So long story short, as a brand, uh, as an agency, as a marketer, make sure that you act on this trend and you don't ignore this very important trend. Thank you.